So uh, Bob here keeps asking me, Mike, you know, if um, I'm a reality-based martial artist and I want to do something like grappling or jujitsu or wrestling, how much sport do I need versus how much reality-based stuff do I need? And where does that fit in? How do I get the skills I need from the jujitsu, the wrestling, and put them together to make sense in a training format with a reality-based outcome? Good question, Bob. All right, this hack lesson is on the grappler. Grappler is something that I do that's uh, a judo, wrestling, Tai Chi, it's whatever you're in a tactile, whether you're standing uh, or laying or whatever that looks like. So here's how it works, okay? So whether you're doing any one of those sports, if you're a reality-based martial artist and you're looking to get the core of what you get when you go through the process of white belt to black belt, um, what you get that you feel when you roll with somebody or you wrestle with somebody or judo guy throws you, what you're feeling is found in years of carving out something based in position, pressure, and strength. That develops one's posture um, within their fighting style, their strength, their chi, their energy, however you look at it. So, very primitively, if you look at the first day of wrestling, the first day of jujitsu, the first day of judo, and you went over these kinds of things, every Greco-Roman wrestling, the first day which you're going to come into is position. Learn the position. Develop resistance against that position. Have someone try to take you to the ground. Have someone try to body lock you. Right? Do the things that a sports person would do to another sports person to develop the strength within that position. The difficulty part for reality based people is that's going backwards because they're not in a sport. So that's not a. But if you want the strength and the, the skill that you get from that sport, if you want a wrestler's takedown with a headbutt, an elbow, and a bite, and then pull out your weapon, you have to have positional strength and dynamic. Be able to have weight disbursement over your person if you're on top and be able to displace the person's weight who is on top. <clears throat> and so that's what you do. You just can't say, I'll just bite. Because you have to gain this first. You can't, you'll never get a second. You'll be choked out. You'll be tapped. You'll be crushed. Your skull will be pushed. It is terrible. Okay, if you some fight a superior grappler, it's very painful. Um, there's some catch wrestlers out there that just crank um, on your limbs and it is excruciating painful. Chokes, the way people pull off stuff is exemplary these days. You have to go through this. There's no way around it. But, as a reality-based practitioner, we, it can be fun from the beginning. We can put it in reality right away. Okay, so this is position, pressure, and strength. It, pressure and strength and, and, and within a position or a different kind of thing, you know it when you do it. You really wouldn't, just by verbalizing it, you don't get it. You got to feel it. Okay? Now, these things coming off, what is this? This is kind of like my sundial, right? So these things coming off, there would sprout from this priority. The biggest piece of this puzzle is basics done well. You want someone to pull off a good arm bar it's because they secured a position. They understood that in that singularity position, there's an arm bar. We'll talk about transition in a moment. But in that single position, this is how you do an arm bar. <clears throat> and it comes from pressure, it comes from strength. Um, and through that, you develop other attributes. I'm not missing anything. I'm not talking about attributes, uh, the specifics like a timing and those types of things and technical proficiencies. We're not worried about that. Right here, this is just a submission, a throw, a takedown, a crank. It is the techniques that are done. How well you train them, your own attribute development style, that's on you as a trainer. But from here, from setting the table, what this looks like from a reality-based format is we have the centermost piece. So in our grappler program, we line this up and we start from the very basics and we learn position and we learn to dominate that position, right? We learn to dominate that position. We're going to do go back. We're going to do something. Go back and kind of check ourselves 
kind of do a self check and see if we're doing everything right. A way to validate our training, if you will. <clears throat> so, reality based formula step one understand that position, pressure, and strength are key. So, you're going to learn the positions and the pressures and the strength needed to hold certain positions under certain pressure um, in the sport of it so that we can apply that same skill and strength to the street and to violence. You can see very specifically that I have inserted violence, this is violence, reality-based force multipliers in between my submissions. Had I had not, I had, could have kept writing black lines in like I was doing sundials and continuing until it was all black in such time that maybe I would have a black belt. Maybe that was the beginning submission so I could do the whole thing in black and that would all represent submissions, throws, takedowns, cranks, reversals, and so forth. And so as we got smaller and smaller, we got into the more minute details of jiu-jitsu or wrestling or judo. But instead, we furthering our goal there, we pulled back. And what we've done is we've taken posture, pressure, strength, put these branches out of submissions, throws, takedowns, and our black out, and then we filled really tight lined areas of violence. And so what we see here is we see a base of what's important, structure, strength. And so what we did to get there is we trained certain positions. We tried to hold those positions, dominate those positions. We had the other person progressively work harder and harder. And then what we did is we put a couple reverses in there, or we threw a submission in there, or we threw a reversal in there, or we started standing and I took a double clinch and I took a takedown. But instead of continuing wrestling and shading more black, I needed to add violence. So I have to have more shaded area than I do lines. Each line is a sport-based submission that's supported here. I've taken the same structure that's given these legs, which normally has lots of legs. I've taken out the ones that find themselves more predominant within the era of reality-based martial arts within that realm. And uh, I've given them more value, certain chokes, certain arm bars, certain things to uh, our liking based on position, someone trying to kick me in the head versus laying in my guard, that kind of thing. But we still had to go through it to get beyond it. So we took this course, this de development, this big frame and spread it over 10 months. So that you spend the time looking here, knowing that everything is gonna be mostly violent. But I'm able to be violent with a superstructure, right? Of the same people who have high skill levels at that specific art or sport. I don't have to be collegiate level, right? But I have to know how to hold a position. I have to know certain things. Now here is the gravy train of it all. This is where you start to have to understand. You have to part ways with logical thinking. What you're normally used to seeing is that if you're doing, let's say, one of the ways we used to train it um, in Jeet Kune Do is that we would do street fighting interceptions, boom, 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 do our thing. But we'd go to the ground and we would go right into Jiu Jitsu. Now, this is a good way to train if you're training, I don't know, Jiu Jitsu. It's, and so it made sense at the time. But what the problem is, is that unless a Jiu Jitsu black belt breaks into your home at two in the morning, that's not who you're fighting. Usually people who do that kind of thing have healthy habits and they discipline themselves. So the type of fighter you're fighting, although not as skilled as say a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, is still gonna bring a kind of game to you, a different kind of game. So as an RBSD person, or a reality-based self-defense person, you're thinking of a different type of person. You're not thinking of a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So that's why we part ways with a lot of positions and it becomes more violent. So we're, we're holding positions, but a lot of the offensive tools have been pushed away in terms of striking and impact, maiming and violent tools, hair pulling and so forth, yes? So we're doing more of that. But that doesn't mean I don't go to an arm bar, shoulder lock, or choke, kick them off, bite them, and then, right, I'm able to combine those things if I put it on the wheel. Hang in there, we're almost through. Okay, this red circle is transition. These are learning transitions from every single point. Now, in your training, this training dial, it could have been all black. All of these could have been black. We put them 
blue because we are a reality-based division. But we need the strength and the knowledge that comes with that traditional base about how to move on the ground, whether I'm employing strikes or I'm employing submissions. Impact is king. Impact, violence is king, maiming, all of those things. The ability to flow from, from a headbutt, a bite, to an arm bar, back to an elbow, get up, kick him in the head, and leave the scene. That's what has to happen within this wheel. And the way you do that, now understand that you can take the blue completely out. And then if you just took the blue completely out, you'd have some very basic submissions and some very basic transition, you'd have a transition into basic submissions and so forth. But the submission would tell you to transition to something else, a pressure. A pressure delivers transition. But the pressure from jujitsu gives you one type of transition. The pressure from being headbutted gives you another type of transition. They're not the same. You get a different response. If I'm setting up an arm bar, if I'm setting up a choke in the middle of a combative situation, this is reality based, so we have to keep our eye on the prize. This is not tournament, right? My wife may be getting raped. The longer this takes me, the further it's gonna put me behind the power curve. And so I have to insert violence. But if I didn't, we would just mildly roll with pressure and do what would look like a white or blue belt level roll session in jiu-jitsu class, right? But you can't do one and not do the other if you're a reality-based person. You can't just assume because some guy puts me down, I'm gonna pull out a tackle me and put a knife on him. It's not gonna happen. You're going to be sucking for air like that. <clears throat> you have to know these things. Final training tips. I want you to think of this as a sundial. So I want you to think of this in three-dimensional like you would see Tony Stark doing it. Pulling it out, pull it out, turn it, and move it. Pull it out. You can name this as an arm bar, as a choke, and you can go along and you can play this game and turn this dial. But you have had to have the time putting in the pressure. Okay? Now the question I always get next is, well Mike, how far in sports do I have to go down until I add violence? <clears throat> I would say learn a few, transition those few, and then add violence and see if the violence changes your transition. And you, and you start from the very basic ones. Or come to the grappler. So there you have it. Um, that's our hack. We're taking, the, now you know, again, you notice the biggest part of this a lot of people want to put on submissions, they want to do all this, but this is it, man. Gaining that strength, when you get in with a superior person of that art, you could feel that. That's the first thing that you feel. That's the first thing that lets you know that you're uh, in over your head, is that feeling <clears throat> that you get when a good when a good grappler guy tackles up with you. You go, oh, whew, it's going to be a long one, okay? Or a quick one. So there you have it. Inserting violence in this dial, in this methodology. Transitioning from one to the other, this transition holds the key, but violence makes you transition differently. Okay, as I said to you uh, earlier, I'm gonna give you a way to fold back and check your work, so to speak. So in the world of reality-based martial arts, there are principles that you have to follow. Um, just in the jiu-jitsu, it's great, it's grappling, gives you great introspection into the human potential. It's fantastic, and it gives you uh, validity, so I can validate that my move works. This is what you need in martial arts. This is what lacks in a lot of martial arts. It's, it's assumed, speculated, and you need to, balls to bone, you need to know it. And validation is key in any training situation. Okay, so to validate our work, or as a uh, reality-based martial artist, we're gonna have what's called um, a grappler's protocol. The protocol is something I got from a friend uh, who's doing some stuff, uh, some deep work, so I'm not going to give his name, but uh, he gave me this, and uh, <clears throat> it's the Atom. It's something I use as a protocol for validating my ground experience in reality-based martial arts. So every position I put, whatever violent insertion I'm using of impact, maiming, maybe here it's kicking the groin, maybe here it's pinching, biting, head-butting, then an arm bar. Then I, so I'm constantly going, and anytime I can bail, I can stand up and leave this training platform. I can go to stand up, I can, you know what I mean? This also includes violence, I can draw a weapon. I can draw a weapon, then arm bar him and cut the, cut the arm, right? And then they usually by that time, you'll find yourself being pushed out of that platform into an escape or um, post-violence situation. So I need to be aware. 
So what violence do I do? What submission do I do? And how do I play this out? Well, that determines the protocol. You have to, so you can't just be random about it. Don't make it up as you go and make yourself some superhero. Follow the rules. Can you be aware? Whatever dominant jujitsu position, if you're so engrossed in being in top position and holding this, this like dispersed mount where you're laying flat over or holding mount, and you can't see anything back here. You're not doing a reality-based self-defense platform. You're doing something else. You're falling back into the jujitsu. And that's okay if you're going to fight a jujitsu guy, in which case it probably won't be this. Not that jujitsu people don't get into a fight. A lot of people out there are learning jujitsu, but they only learn it subserviently. If you're looking at, you know, Satan's backyard, so to speak, uh, the devil's playground, backyard fenced in cage fights, uh, that's a good way to look at it. They'll know about enough of that. Yeah, a little ground guard game, but they're not going to know the good stuff, not how to respond to these violent insertions and headbutting, thumb in the eyes, biting the ear, kneeing the guy in the face, grabbing his groin, getting up, breaking his arm. And then drawing a weapon, okay? So that's why it's more of that. So can I do all of that and be aware? So if I'm in a position that creates a place where I can't be aware, it's no longer useful and I need to change it. Secondly, I need to dominate. Now listen, as a virtuous citizen, if you're teaching these to people who are just regular people, they're probably gonna be on their back. They're probably gonna be in a, in a negative position. That's just the way that relationship between violence and victim works. But that doesn't mean they can't be aware. As a matter of fact, from your back is a great place to be aware. They can still dominate, especially if they're maiming from that eyes and biting and grabbing the groin and pinching and pulling hair. Yes? And so they may, not, they may stay in these violent areas and never move to submission. Right? So they can dominate from the bottom. You know, they can go to this being a reversal. So they're doing here, then they do, let's say, a scissor suit, a very basic jiu-jitsu move that isn't really good, wouldn't work on even a blue belt. But because of the violent insertions, white belt, blue belt stuff works because their response is different because of impact and biting and different types of pain pressures. Finally, thirdly, the third checklist on my platform, on this grappler's platform, is can I access weaponry? And so your positions that you are going to move into violently or submissively or in a, maybe a single leg or double leg, the way that you go about it, if I have a sidearm or if I have a weapon access, I don't want to go in on the opposite side where I'm exposing my weapon or I can't access it as well. So these parameters, these checklists help fill in that. So don't go all Jackie Chan movie stuff. Ask yourself, can I access a weapon? At this point, in, while I'm on my back, and this guy's trying to kick me in my head, or do I need to do something very violently first? Okay, finally, be mobile. So we talk about this on the ground. This is more of a pressure position move thing. You have to be mobile on the ground. You have to be able to hit, move, armbar move. Hit, move, don't stay static. The longer you stay in one spot, the easier it is to hit you. Conversely, when I talk about putting people on the ground, I don't think about putting them on the ground from a jujitsu perspective. I think about putting them on the ground of isolating my target so I can stand over, weaponize myself, and be at a higher point on uh, the strategy scale because I have the higher ground. I'm on top, standing up, and he's on the ground. He has to go through my knees, my hips, my shoulders, elbows up before he does anything. And that's a good place to be. I can see if he draws a weapon, right? So it looks different from if I'm serving the ground fight. So conversely, that's where that violent guy wants to be too. He doesn't want to pull me into his guard. So that's the second thing that creates. So here's the first platform is the Adam platform. The second platform is the violence platform. Train against what you're going to fight for. Once you've learned these things, dial the knob in to violence. So who you're fighting. I'm no longer going against the guy who's trying to armbar me. I'm not. He's not trying to get me in a heel hook. If I stand up with him, he's not going to squirm between my legs at X car and go to him. He's not. He's going to try to stick me in the gut, maybe, or something like that. It's just not the same. It's just as deadly, just different. Just not what you're used to when you're training the traditional aspects 
that come off in jujitsu. So when you come in here, it's very tempting to stay here. It looks very satisfying in that world. You spend a year dominating these positions, so you want to exploit them and uh, pull off arm bars and chokes. It's very, very healthy, very challenging. You can't do it very long. It beats you up, especially if you're encouraged to go to tournaments and train, and that's how you validate, and it beats you up. Um, so, guys, that's it. That's the hack. Um, get in touch with the grappler program. Play this on your own. Stay in contact with me. I'll walk you through it. Good training.